bombshell revelation from two Republican senators to let today alleges that former FBI Director James Comey was drafting Clinton's exoneration before his agents had interviewed some of the key witnesses. In fact, 17 uh, are believed to be in that group, including the Democratic presidential candidate herself. Joining me now, Byron York, chief political correspondent for The Washington Examiner and a Fox News contributor, and Zach Bacanis, former DNC senior advisor. Gentlemen, welcome uh, to both of you. Uh, this Here popped up late this afternoon, um, and it comes from, uh, from Senators Grassley and Graham after they had time to review all of these documents and input from the people on, on Comey's team. And one of them said, you know, that he had drafted uh, you know, a similar statement to what we heard on July 5th, way back in May. And at that point, he hadn't interviewed um, Brian Pagliano. He hadn't interviewed a lot of people who were involved. And the immunity agreements for Heather Samuelson and Cheryl Mills were not in place yet. Um, so, Byron, what do you make of that? Well, you know, this thing actually looked fishy at the time. Remember, the FBI interviewed Hillary Clinton over the 4th of July weekend last last year. They interviewed her on Saturday, July 2nd. Uh, the 4th of July was Monday. And then Tuesday, the 5th, uh, James Comey comes out and says that she would not uh, be charged. In addition, you have all those others you just mentioned. One of the most common features of Washington investigations is trying to determine whether someone has made false statements to investigators to the FBI to the grand jury to somebody that's often the way these things end up is in charges of false statements and what it appears here is with the 17 people that that they had not interviewed by the time that uh, Mr. Comey began drawing his conclusions and the, the 48 hours they gave themselves to evaluate all of Hillary Clinton's three and a half hours of testimony and it indicates they just really weren't looking to see if these people were actually telling them the truth or not. Yeah, I, I just want to play for everybody a, an exchange between James Comey and Richard Burr, uh, the head of that committee, during the, the discussion that they had on Capitol Hill. Watch this. Was your decision influenced by the Attorney General's tarmac meeting with the former President Bill Clinton? Yes, in, in a ultimately uh, conclusive way. Were there other things that contributed to that that you can describe in an open session? At one point, the Attorney General had directed me not to call it an investigation, but instead to call it a matter which confused me and concerned me. Zach, what do you make of all this tonight? Well, I think a couple things. I mean, the first off, the Republicans need to get their story straight. The first, you know, what they were first arguing is that James Comey was fired because he was too hard on Hillary Clinton. Now they're arguing that uh, he was fired because he was too soft on Hillary Clinton. Both things cannot be true. The second thing that I would say is that, look, he said under oath, James Comey, he said under oath that he made the decision in July. If they're going to say that he committed perjury, they should just come out and say it. And the third thing I would say is that the timing of this is incredibly fishy. It comes on the same day that we learn that Donald Trump's own lawyers are sending a memo to the special counsel uh, where they are trashing James Comey in, in what appears to be an attempt to undermine his reputation as we learn that he is the star witness, or very likely the star witness, in the obstruction of justice case mm -hmm. against President Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that this came out today is incredibly fishy and should raise a lot of eyebrows. The second thing about timing is that it comes 24 hours after uh, we know that Donald Trump called Chuck Grassley. All right, and you, so you, Chuck you, Grassley. You, I gotcha. I, I get where you're, I mean, you're putting a lot of uh, things together here, Byron. Um, does that make sense to you? Well, actually, there were people in the Justice Department and in the FBI who were unhappy that the way Com with the way Comey treated Hillary Clinton in in July, on July 5th, when he made that announcement, and then again on October 28th when he came out days before the election and said that he was restarting or reopening uh, the email investigation. There were there were certainly people in law enforcement who said on July 5th a a the head of the FBI should not come out yeah. and give a long explanation right. for what they were doing and then they shouldn't have done it again on go. October 28th. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Coming thank up, you, you. remembering principles.